We've got a really special guest on the show today. Um, I think I'm related to this guy somehow. Uh, Bradley and I have been brothers for <laughs> half brothers, half brothers from from another mother. <laughs> lived lived in the same crazy household, and I'm sure we'll have some stories to tell on the show today. Uh, but I'm really proud to have my brother Bradley Farrell uh, on our show. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks, man. Great Thanks. to be here. It's a beautiful setup you have. Thank you. Thank you. The focus of today's show is going to be something something very different and interesting which i'm really really excited to talk about which he'll talk about in his accident and we'll continue with that but bradley um has done everything from being a world-class tattooer to having his own tattoo shop uh to being an entrepreneur and starting one of the first uh on online uh social media companies and um and through that um Bradley's interest in cars, and the list goes on and on. So let's get into it, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So what do, what, what do we want to ask him? So, um... Skateboard seems to be, you know, in the backbone of, of many things that you do. I mean, yeah. it's where it started, isn't it? Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of in a lot of ways, skateboarding has shaped who I am today. Even though, as juvenile as that might sound, you know, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, we could talk about ju about juvenile growing up with skateboarding. Yeah, but uh -huh. even still today, you know, some people look at like you know, fifty year old skateboarding down the street. It's like you know, grow up kind of thing. And but once you're like a skateboarder. Like, you know, I grew up in the 80s skateboarding and stuff, and it was it was very, very important to me. And I think that it um, through like skateboards, tattooing, punk rock music, that all just has like this it intersects. How about at the same time, all those things? All like, those same, what, yeah. what yeah. year were you, you say? I'd say 83, 84. Yeah. So you were like yeah. 12? Yeah. Okay. Before that. Before that? Yeah. yeah. Probably uh, probably 12. 12. Um, <laughs> You know, Bradley got his first tattoo, what, at 13? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's another good story. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So, like, all those things, like skate, skateboarding, punk rock, tattoo, interest in tattooing, like, they all came together. How? How yes. did they reach? I think, uh, so, you know, being into skateboarding and watching, like, Wheels on Fire, Streets on Fire, there was a specific, like, um, skateboarder, his name is Jason Jesse, and... Like he would skate vert. I never really skated vert, so I didn't have that connection. But like he, his just the whole lifestyle just seemed very, you know, lackadaisical. And it was interesting to me. So he was the first person, you know, maybe teenager that was tattooed. And then the music that was playing behind him was, was called Start the Machine by Blast, which is a California like skate punk band, you know. And those things together i was like skateboarding that kind of music that kind of look like it kind of formed who i wanted to be you know to some degree um you know eventually you start to you find yourself later on in years but i still have that dna and i think that that dna will always be with me you know that that skateboard kind of feeling well that kind of that kind of brought you into your accident right yeah, um, you know, I, what's your I, accident? I was well, yeah, well, very connected. He's to, got he's got so many accidents. <laughs> my accident's being born. <laughs> the, the, the biggest accident I say was you know I, I owned my own tattoo shop for maybe eight or ten years, something around those lines. Um, within that time, I even like built skateboard shop, uh, built skateboard ramps in the shop. I like removed the drawing room and built a mini half pipe, just so like. You know, when someone's not getting tattooed, I can skate it. It was just fun, you know. Um, but when you have a ramp, people just start to know. And then, you know, amateurs start coming by and locals start coming by and then word gets around and then pros start coming by. And it's start. It's no longer a tattoo shop. You know, my my client would come in and be like, yeah, yeah I'm skate, you know. <laughs> Brad Bradley built I built a half pipe on my parents' tennis court. You guys saw okay? me yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and it yeah. really, we kind of became kind of the scene for a minute, right? Yeah. Would you, you know, where kids. Before a skate, 
it was before skate camp or or skate parks or there was yeah. nothing like that mm-hmm. yeah. Why, yeah. so what year was it like when you had a, a your um, on the tennis court yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. yeah well, that's probably like 13 years old <laughs> like late 80s yeah, 88, 88, 88. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah and built like a mini half pipe with a with a spine and built like steps and platforms and handrails and banks up against well we built like everything me and my friend Franco uh RIP but um you know we built everything together and he also in the tattoo shop started to you know help me build the ramps inside there i know it sounds crazy because you think about a tattoo shop how big can it be it was maybe like you know 2000 square feet um but it was a perfect you know place for like a little mini ramp about you know four foot high or something like that it was fun just to to trick on Uh, unfortunately you know being a skateboarder and growing up with some really great skateboarders a lot of those skateboarders became pros um you know keenan milton r.i.p uh keith huffenagel r.i.p wow um but gino iannucci was a, a very important figure um today still and uh when i was growing up um so when i opened up the tattoo shop um he moved back to new york from la and he was on like world industries and well can i say this also um i think you had a lot to do with gino sobriety as well right and that's maybe i mean i was so you were sober at the time yeah absolutely and i know gino you mean he he had issues you know yeah yeah um it was it was a good but i think he looked up to you as a you know i don't know if he looked that would be a you know so you you and gino knew each other for a long time yeah we knew each other for a long time um but you know, it's still Gino's way. You know, there's there's still like that. Like if I wanted to go out and skate and film him, um, it was like like nah or okay or hey, knock on my door at 2 a.m. You know, and like now let's go. Let's 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 go skate. Let's go skating. Um, but what took place was um, the basement of my tattoo shop was. It was always a, a lot of different things. We would mix ink down there, but it was nothing that we would profit from, right? We would just like shoot airsoft guns at one another or something like that. Um, and Gino saw that space as a place to launch a skateboard shop. And what that would do, and it was called Poets. And today he still has a brand called Poets, mm-hmm. Poets Brand. And uh, it's, it's great. It's a really cool like apparel company. Um, and the, so the first Poets was in the basement of my tattoo shop. What that did was that drew all real professional skaters to come when they would come into town and they would stop by and they would see Gino and so on and so forth. So I was able to meet like, you know, the whole array, like Eric Costin and Brian Anderson. I tattooed Brian Anderson and Jeremy Rogers and all those guys. And, um, And eventually like Gino was like, hey, you know, you have a camera. And I was like, yeah, I have a camera like to film my kids. But I don't have cameras that like Ty Evans is bringing and stuff like that. And he was like, well, just let's try to like film some stuff because I'm shooting for the film called Yeah, Right. And I'd really like to have, uh, you know, a part in it. But there's not many people in Long Island. There's there's, you know, R.B. Malley that, you know, is a great film cinematographer in New York City. And he usually films like all the guys that are, you know, in the five boroughs and stuff. But R.B. rarely comes out to Long Island. So he was like. You know, you you could be like the Long Island filmer, and I was like, you know, for you, Gino, I'll I'm into doing it. You know, whatever can help you get a part and keep you clean and whatever. Like, I'm totally down for it. So the tattoo shop was running fine, and I had a bunch of tattooers being able to make money there. So that wasn't a, it wasn't about you know losing money somewhere and, and putting my energy elsewhere where I wasn't going to be making money anyway. Um, well, did you find that you you were filming almost every day? Every day, every day, really? every day, and but like the first, you know, the first story is, uh, I went out and he had like, you know, skateboarder magazine there, and they were taking the photographs, and he was going to do like this backside backside flip over a Burger King Gap and land in like the roughest 
kind of cement that you know only New York skaters could skate, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, like if you're not interested in skateboarding, people probably don't understand that it's so important to videotape it. Yeah, you know, right? yeah, Cause, of cause, course. Yeah. yeah, that's how you know, like Spike Jones came around, basically, right? Well, yeah, yes. well, yeah. well, Spike started shooting what for for Trans World, yeah. and was he shoot for Thrasher? And a and, photographer. Yeah, of I course, mean, it's so important presence in yeah. the skateboarding scene. I mean, I think people don't know that. Yeah, then he, you know, he, he you actually to made it. Video Days, which was a Jason Lee, Mark Gonzalez film, you know, as well as a Spike Jones film. Yeah. But that was his first, you know, real video in the skateboard world. And from that, he was able to, you know, springboard into, you know, Coppola and right. everywhere yeah. else. Right. Went, and he's phenomenal today. Okay. But like, getting back to your accident. Um, so... So I filmed this trick that he did, and it was a really great trick, and he did it like in the first try, right? So wow. I was like, <laughs> which uh, never, ha- which like, never happens, right? Yeah, it rarely happens. I mean, right. today the kids do everything like that. You know, it's like a robot, but there's a different kind of style, and Gino has one of the best styles. It's considered he is considered to have one of the best styles in the game, and people are really, really excited to see new footage of Gino or old footage, right? But this was a time where there was years apart where there was no real Gino footage. So this was it. So I was excited about it. And Gino was like, yeah, that looks good, you know. And then I sent it off to Ty. Ty Evans was the major cinematographer and director for the film. And um, and today Ty Evans is like, you know, a god. Well, you talk about world. like talk about like the flat earth. I mean, yeah. a great skateboard. <laughs> it's a great skateboard film. Yeah, it's really, it's and, pushing and the how, boundaries yeah. of what skateboarding films Yeah, ex- like. exactly. I submit the the clip, okay? And Ty Evans says, no way in hell is this footage making it into my video. And Gino's like, well, what what can I do? And he was like, well, you can, you know, either go to the city and film this stuff. And Gino's like, I'm not going to the city and filming stuff. So what can we do to help Bradley? And he was like, well, I got to fly out there and I got to teach him pretty much. I got to show him the ropes. I have to show him what white balances and aperture and you know what camera to buy and what lenses to buy and how to film basically so i got well that's that's amazing that I mean, he didn't even know you, right? And didn't and, even and, know me. and had the trust in you. Yeah. And, I mean, he, like he kind of took you. Uh, I mean, just, yeah. yeah, he took to you. I mean, I mean, he was your mentor, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. For sure. Um, there was, in my opinion, there was nobody better. Still today, there's nobody better in skateboarding that 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 films and, and directs the way that he Were you does. like freaked out when you heard that? Nah. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I, I, I don't know if like one of the big, like I was a photographer, if one of the biggest photographers was like, hey, I'm gonna come and teach you how to be one of the best photographers. I'd be like, but he was, you know, he was like at that age, or where like, he's like too, like too cool for school, right? No, yeah. it wasn't that. It was the fact that like I was doing something for to really help a friend, yeah, right? Gino, and I was not looking to be a filmmaker, um, and I, I had a tattoo shop that was throwing off my income, and I had a home that Gino was living in the basement, giving me income from. So it wasn't about like. You know, oh my God, I'm gonna now go into this world that I'm really excited about. It was really like I'm excited to help Chino. And so Ty Evans was always like, you know, he was definitely like this far off thing that I thought I would probably never meet, you know? So for him to come to me, but we just hit it right off because skaters are skaters, you know? And if they and if they trust you, then it's like you're just part of the group. But it's hard to become part of the group. So very thankful that you know, he let me in and he showed me the ropes. I mean, this is something that people go to school for, you know. Um, I didn't go to school for any film, you know, but Ty taught me the ins and outs. And I mean, not everything, but at least if it's a cloudy day and how to set my camera, as opposed to it's a sunny day and how to set my camera. Or if I'm using a long lens shot and not a, you know, not the death lens shot, not a a fisheye shot. Or if I'm following um, Gino and, and doing a line, you know, I'm not like the camera's not down here, the camera's not up here, the camera's midway. And you have to be conscious of that, like, as you're skating, you know? So little things like that, like the little tricks of the trade, I mean, he showed me everything. So from there, I, I went out, I, I actually sold, like, I think, all my guitars. At one point... Um, <laughs> just, just to buy camera equipment. Yeah, yeah. so, like, wow. Wow. tattooing, I always had a thing up in the shop that said I'll barter for... Um, all your musical instruments. I, I don't need money. 
And people would come in, they'd bring me, you know, Les Pauls and amazing Telecasters, like the guitars that you would die for today because they're not made in the United States anymore, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah. guitars that are just you know, $4,000 today when then they were like 500 bucks, you know? Um, and I just took all my guitars and I sold every single one. And, uh, and I bought my first camera, which was the VX2000. And then I bought the Century Optics lens that went with it. And then I had to buy a tripod and you buy, you know, all this other stuff that, and then generators and lights. And, and before you know it, you know, you're, you're a skateboard film filmer. Before you knew it, they were like, they were taking their gear and they were going to, <clears throat> to Queens, to, to Flushing Metal Park underneath the globe. Yeah. I mean, did you do that gorilla style? Yeah. Yeah. Like you yeah, no, get, you no permits, permits for that no, nothing, no. right? You just go there. You skate, so they went, you know, and just lit everything up, and uh, and and we're filming. Even more so, like eventually, we would, you know, I became somebody that was trusted in the film world, in the skateboard film world. So then Giovanni Reddy was like, "Hey, we're gonna go to Italy, and and we're gonna do like this little tour." Mm -hmm. And he brought Gino who's and, Giovanni? Um, he's a he's a very well known. Um, a photographer. Okay. And he's an actor too and whatever. But he's on the photography side, you know, he's world renowned in the skate world. Giovanna Retta. Um, he's even in like the, I think, skate, the video game. Like when you do really? a trick, he's like, nah, man, that sucks. <laughs> what, like in like in, and like one of Tony Hawk's games or yeah. something. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so he brought us to Italy. And, you know, when I brought over my. You know, I don't know anything about Italy. I don't know what the schedule is. I just know it's going to be really, really hot. I'm kind of a snob when it comes to like. So you went with the, with the whole girl chocolate team? Not with them. It was like the the people that um, Retta wanted to come. So there were people from Girl and Chocolate, but there were some people from Zoo York and you know, like Zared and um, I think Zared, and then there was like Mikey Taylor and Anthony Papalardo and. Um, All these guys from New York. Janowski. No, these are people from Alien Workshop. I mean, right, everywhere. For, everywhere. Okay. Yeah, he just basically was like, I want to put together this my own team to go to Italy and film. And Retta was like, I want you to come. So that was, I think he wanted me to come because he wanted Gino to come and he knew that Gino would be filming and mm -hmm. he wanted, you know, me to, to do that. So, um, but we really hit it off. <laughs> you were like his own here. personal, like, you're Gino's personal photographer, pretty much, right? And that's um, kind of how... To a degree, I think yeah. that that's how, you know, I was able to be accepted into that right, world. Right, how, like, how you got street cred. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mm -hmm. so, my, so the accident would really be like, I have nothing to do with film. I have, and I'm filming my kids being born and making videos and stuff and having fun with that. And I always definitely felt an attraction to editing specifically. Um, so... You know, the accident would be to fall upon one of the greatest filmmakers of all time and um, have him teach me the ropes. Pretty you were much. not even asking for it, but you. No, he befriended yeah. you, right? I mean, yeah. still yeah. to this day, you're good friends with him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's, uh, that's something that people like pay a lot of money for. Right. right. <laughs> so, there's, there's, so there's Woodward Camp. There's, there's Woodward Camp, which I went to before yeah. uh, when I was into BMX, like 10. 11 years old, before I was skateboarding, I was always into you know, BMX, and uh, there's Woodward Skate Camp today. But then it was Woodward like gymnastics and BMX. There was no skateboarding. But today it's gotten so massive that it's skateboarding. And Ty goes there in the summertime to do courses and teach kids how to film, you know? So it's like I got that pre-course, you, know, you know, 20 years prior to, to that <laughs> taking place. Um, but you know what was amazing is that I was able to kind of pass that torch on because I knew that this, I loved Gino, I loved skateboarding, I loved the people, you know, Rick Howard who owns, who owned Girl, like amazing guy, you know, all these guys are just great, great guys. And being able to film Brandon Beeble and Eric Costin and all that and go to, you know, the skate places that were very, very important in my mind watching growing up these these places and being able to skateboard there and film these guys it was uh it was definitely like you know being in a little in a little bubble of of that world but there was a guy in italy by the name of federico vitetta and uh, he happened to be a, a cousin of one of our friends here eric rossetti and 
when we went over to Italy, he was like, look up my man Federico. He'll be able to take you to spots that no one has ever skated before. So Federico is a, you know, he's an inspiring filmer himself. And now he has all these pros at his fingertips. But, you know, I'm the one that's filming there, right? And Aaron Meza was also, he's, he's one of the filmers at Girl. He does a lot more things other than just film. But Aaron Meza is a big name as well. And it was me and, and Meza. And then there was this third, you know, Italian guy in the corner filming shots that we were doing. And it was like, is this okay? You know, I never cared about stuff like that. It's like, you know, great. You're part of the team. You're showing me where this spot is. Like we wouldn't That's know without cool. you, you know, you That's want to film, cool. film. Yeah. And if it's good, then submit it. And I'll like, you know, push you forward and stuff. So long story short, you know, I didn't want to bring back the generator and lights on the plane. This was, you know, pre 9-11. So um, I left it in Italy and I gave it to Federico and I said, you know, you know, film all your friends, film all the pros that come through here. Because I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of pros that now start to come through because they're going to see the videos that we're putting out, you know, and they're going to want to come here to skate that. And you you're probably going to be that guy. So now you have what you need, you know, to light up a street at the night. And uh, and then he comes over to the United States and we're still filming for Yeah Right because that was like a three year thing to film for that video. It was so massive, so many skaters um, that it was, a, it was a big to do, it was a big launch. So you, were you shooting in any other, any other locations besides New York and Italy or? Um, it was pretty much New York, you know, Long Island, Manhattan, um, Italy and you know, so it would be, so the first year it was Rome, the next year it was Genoa and Ventimiglia and Milano and, you know. So, so you, went, you went to Italy twice. Yeah. Wow. Because Year Right is a long film. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. And then through that, um, you know, Ty was able to meet Federico because I made an introduction and he was like, who's that filming, you know, the thing? And I'm like, he was with us in Italy. He's great, you know. I'm not going to be filming for, this isn't going to be what I'm going to be doing. I need to go back and, you know, start tattooing again. And I, I think I want to, you know, sell my tattoo shop and move into some technology things. So, yeah, right's done. I have a lot of footage from, you know, the past year that you could put into the Lakai video, which was done. And also like the hot chocolate tour and just a number of other videos that they wanted to, you know, have some B-roll or any of that kind of stuff. And I submitted it to him. And, uh, and then Federico became like that second guy in charge. Um, for the girl, from, girl from, yeah, from girl yeah. Mm -hmm. For the girl skating too, yeah. yeah. And then Federico started to film specifically like it was Feds and Ty, but Ty would be doing like these big, big monster projects and Feds would be able to, you know, do the, the um, like the tour videos. And then before you know it, he was doing like the Lakai video. And then he said, screw it. He became really close with Spike Jones and they did a small short film that you could, you know, get on Apple called Wet Dream. And Gino is the main character in that. And it's a, it's really, really, it's a very different, differently done skateboard film with a lot of really cool effects. So I would, you know, recommend you check it out. Even if you're not a skateboarder, like it's just a cool yeah. film. I did check it out myself, but um, but I didn't know it was Gino who was in it. Yeah, Gino was doing the jump rope. Right, okay. So that's my accident, you know, fell upon um, one of the greatest cinematographers uh, of, of our generation.